Hello, my name is Leslie Williams, and today's date is uh, March 13th, 2013, and I am in San Diego, California. And this is to show you what today's date is, just to, just to let you know. And these following statements are going to be made so fellow San Diegoans and fellow Californians can understand something. It is my intention and my goal to prove to the public, to fellow Californians, fellow San Diegoans, and fellow Americans that I have been a victim of this crime now, at least. I already know that I've been a victim of this crime for multiple, multiple, multiple years before it openly, overtly, and sometimes directly started towards me. My goal, it has been my goal and my aim to expose the factual realities concerning the perpetrators involved, the, tech, <coughs> the tactics and methods used, and the places used, and the people who aided and abetted in it, and the employment descriptions who aided and abetted in it and didn't help. They get paid to help. Now, this right here, you might, when, I'm just going to fly right into what this video is about. This right here is an article, a news broadcast that you can go to by uh, going to Google and typing in stalk, drugged, and raped. Is it happening in San Antonio? And this is the actual news broadcaster who developed the story and published it, posted it on February 17, 2010, and was updated, I guess, on April 20th. Okay? Concerning Joe Conger, concerning Ken Five, I guess that's a news news station. Stalk concerning this story. Stalk, drugged, and rape. Is it happening in San Antonio? Google this. What you see right in here, okay? What you see from where my fingers are showing you. Google that until you find this literal article, which will show the news broadcast on the Google web page that comes up. As a result, you'll not only be able to witness the video of this broadcast, but you will literally be able to witness the transcript of it, which is this right here, which I printed out. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you some information concerning uh, this, uh, this broadcast and the transcript of this broadcast that was published on February 17, 2010. Okay. And as a result, if you follow my instructions, you can see the transcript of this broadcast. Well, what's relative is the transcript of the broadcast concerning the victims that are that are uh, covered in the news broadcast and the actual date it was made. The actual news broadcast that it was made. And why is it relevant? I'm going to show you why it's relevant right now. Okay, this is an email file right here. Okay, from an email account. From an email account that was made in Michigan and was still being used when I came out here to San Diego, California between 1 and 37 days uh, from around October 3rd, 2006 up until November 6th to 7th, 2006. This email was made and sent by me, Leslie Williams, to a Wayne County prosecutor in Wayne, Michigan. She was a prosecutor that covered the county where the crimes happened towards me in Michigan. Okay. Subject, tro tro Trojan Horse was the code name I was using at that time. Torture was the crime, a part of the crime. This is me, my name. That's the prosecutor's name in, in Wayne, Michigan, and that's the date it was sent. Okay? Now, the, the top of the file shows the prosecutor's name. Okay? It shows that I was contacting her concerning the crimes that had happened towards me in Michigan. But I want you to understand something. The second I came out here to San Diego, California, I was subject to two organized gang stalking methods along all my routes, including at the libraries I was using to send these emails, which was the Point Loma Library. I didn't know, though, the crime that was happening towards me in Michigan, and when I came out to San Diego in 2006, the same exact crime that transpired towards me in San Diego when I left Michigan to come to San Diego in 2006, the same crime was transpiring towards me in San Diego during those 1 in 37 days. Organized Gang Stalking is a nationwide syndicate that operates on the same exact met method and templates of behaviors, protocols, tactics, and how it's organized crime in the system that was eventually discovered by me. I want you to understand something. At the bottom of this one particular of the many emails I sent from Point Loma Library, which is right here, it was sent on October 24, 2006 at 2.32 p.m. This is the beginning of the email right here. Okay. 
Okay, the civil and federal agencies and international, because I was even contacting Amnesty International about what was happening, what had happened to me and what was currently happening to me along my routes in San Diego. Then at the end of the uh, of this same email that I was making in the library, it literally says it right here. Physical matter, okay, it literally says it. Physical matter does not disappear out of your apartment and backpack in your apartment, is what that meant, and then reappear at a location in your house, which was the apartment, okay? Because what it was, it was an upper flat, an upper apartment inside a house that you frequently see all of a sudden, which meant that physical matter doesn't disappear. Physical matter does not disappear out of your apartment and backpack and then reappear at a location in your house, which meant in your apartment, that you, a location that you see all the time, that you frequently see, how it doesn't reappear all of a sudden, okay? Now, I'm going to come back to the later part of this email that talks about the point in my library after I make you the direct illustration why this is pertinent. Physical matter does not disappear all of a sudden out of your apartment and backpack in your apartment and then reappear at a location in your apartment you frequently see all of a sudden. This was made in 2006. Tuesday, October 24th, sent by me from Point Loma Library, which is even mentioned in the sentences right below that statement, and I'll get back to that in a second. Now, I want you to look at this transcript as a result of a news broadcast from February 17, 2010. I've already stated Gang Stalking Expeditions is a nationwide syndicate up and operating in every state in the United States, and they operate on the same methods and templates of behaviors and terrorist schemes, okay? Stalked, Drugged, and Raped is the name of the news broadcast. It was published and made by this guy that works for the news station, Ken Five, Joe Conger. He posted it on February 17, 2010. If you go to Google and type this in right here, what you see where my fingers are, okay? Okay? You will see a webpage that holds the actual broadcast as far as the video and the transcript of the broadcast. Now, going back to this again for one second, this is a 2006 email, me stating physical matter doesn't disappear out of your apartment and backpack in your apartment and then reappear at a location in your house you frequently see all of a sudden. October 24, 2006, email sent from Point Loma Library, which is mentioned right below that statement, okay, on October 24, 2006. This is a section of the transcript of this transcript from February 17, 2010 from the second victim that's covered in the news broadcast concerning this, okay, news broadcast. Alinda Johnson. She is found in the transcript and in the actual news broadcast. You can find her if you look at the transcript and then look, listen to the broadcast. I copied and pasted the relevant section of her statements in the news broadcast right here from the transcript. Linda Johnson says someone poisoned her water supply with heavy metals, which I have statements in some of my blogs concerning how my water was being screwed with, but that's not what this is about. Linda Johnson says someone poisoned her water supply with heavy metals in northeast San Antonio. Then she goes on to say, then there's the story of the bracelet that went missing and then reappeared. Okay? From a 2010 news broadcast concerning gang stalking and being drugged and raped. Is it happening in San Antonio? February 17, 2010. This is a copied and paste section of one of the persons covered in that news broadcast, Linda Johnson, how she talks about it. Then there's the story of the bracelet that went missing and then reappeared. This is the 2006 email of, from me. Physical matter does not disappear out of your apartment and backpack and then reappear at a location in your house, which was your apartment, my apartment, that you frequently see all of a sudden. 2006, same exact tactic, and then reappear, okay? Physical matter does not disappear out of your apartment and backpack and then reappear. Then there's the story of the bracelet that went missing, disappeared, and then reappeared. That's the second victim that's covered in this news broadcast that was published on... February 17, 2010.
This is an email that was written by me concerning me describing one of the methods that was used against me in Michigan because I was contacting the Wayne County, Michigan prosecutor from Point Loma Library in San Diego in 2006 concerning one of the things that happened towards me in one of my last apartments in Michigan before I left Michigan to come to San Diego. 2006, same tactic mentioned in a news broadcast by a separate individual in another state in 2010. That's just one of the two individuals that have been covered in this news broadcast. Now hold on a second, I gotta take my shirt off. Alright, now, the same news broadcast covers, this broadcast covers two people. Okay? And you can find the broadcast, the video of it, and the transcript concerning it by Googling this. Again, I'm gonna regurgitate it by Googling this. Okay, by that information. Two individuals are covered in this news broadcast, and a third individual is named John Hall. I'll get to him in a minute. As a result of going to this website, looking at the video of the news broadcast, and then printing out the transcript of the broadcast, I listened to it, and then I read the, and then I read the transcript. Verbeth is the very first target concerning this crime that's covered on the... Uh, on, the, on this actual news broadcast that this is a transcript of, okay? For Beth, is related to, in reference to this broadcast, to John Hall. He's either the ex-girlfriend of hers or the ex-fiancé of her. I'll get back to him in a minute. She states, as a result of her apartment being entered, okay, and how they, the perpetrators who entered her home when she was gone left all the lights on and all the doors open, along with furniture being moved around, dryer disassembled. They did the same thing to my apartments in Dearborn, but that's not the, the, the exact description of what I'm, I'm trying to describe. She described, this is this the first target of two targets in this news broadcast in the same state in Texas, talking about how they've been perpetrated against because of the same crime of gang stalking. The first, the first target in the news broadcast for Beth, who had a relationship with John Hall, states someone entered her apartment and left all the lights on and all the doors open. A 2006 uh, blog was written concerning what they did to me in the second apartment once this organized gang stalking expedition openly started towards me in Michigan. A blog was written concerning that apartment. How they entered my apartment while I was sleeping and opened up all the doors and turned on all the lights in every single room, which included attic room, bathroom door, closet doors of every room, bedroom doors, and then turned on the lights in all of these rooms how they entered her home and left all the lights on and all the doors open. Okay, now this has to do with, this right here is a, their smart aleck way because these two, these two physical actions have to actually do with the mind control that's part of these expeditions. And I know you don't understand that right now. You're not meant to understand that, but just understand something. If you stay with my videos over time, you'll see how this connects to, it's got to do with the physical action to leave symbology at a target's apartment that they're eventually going to be used for mind control. Now you might think to yourself, how is mind control part of this? And oh my God, I think I've heard enough is what you might be thinking. John Hall is covered in the same news broadcast in reference to how Miss Ferbeth, who made the statement that someone entered her home and left on all the lights and opened up all the doors in the same exact news broadcast, John Hall is described in the news broadcast as far as his relationship with one of the victims, Verbeth. Okay? John Hall is all over the internet in reference to how he's got videos online. You can go to YouTube and type in John Hall Satellite Terrorism Remote Neural Monitoring. Listen to all of his videos. Okay? You know, you go to the bottom of Freedom from Covert Harassment and Surveillance and look at the bottom of their homepage. There's three PDF links. Remote Neural Monitoring is one of them. Now, in organized gang stalking expeditions, remote neural monitoring and specific types of electronic harassment is always perpetrated towards organized gang stalking targets. They just can't prove it because this is technology they use on targets from a distance. John Hall has got, and he even wrote a book. In fact, this is one of the radio interviews that he, uh, of, the, of the, I guess, I don't know if you want to call it an organization or whatever. It's the type, it's the radio, radio, Red Ice Radio did an interview with John Hall concerning satellite terrorism because what they use is satellite stationary satellites and satellites that are up in the air 
in order to modulate their frequencies in order uh, down to step them down to interface with the bioelectric frequency of the target's brain remote neural monitoring where they monitor a target neurally from a remote distance now what I want you to understand here is that this is a small illustration of John Hall in reference to one of his YouTube videos uh, that I, I went and listened to and then taped the audio of the video just to show you that I have in my possession uh, some of John Hall's uh, radio interview how he was covered on Camelot which is another radio broadcasting we'll just listen to a couple seconds of it All right, now, John Hall, all of his videos talks about remote neural monitoring, gang stalking, and organized stalking, and um, uh, uh, how remote neural monitoring is being used to surveil gang stalking targets, and used by using satellites. Okay, it literally states it right there, John Hall, satellite terrorism, surveillance, technology. My name is Leslie Williams. Now, I'm going to get back to these emails for a second. I was in Point Loma Library where I sent these emails to this prosecutor. It literally says, check around Point Loma Library, San Diego. You never know what you might hear. And what I meant by that is H-E-A-R instead of H-E-R-E. -E, around the media room or after I go into the bathroom. That's one of the emails concerning Point Loma Library. Where I was being harassed through gang stalking methods by their staff, security, and people coming in acting as patrons. Okay, but I didn't know what was happening to me yet back in 2006 was gang stalking. Now I want you to look at this one right here. Um, this is another email that was sent in the same time period from San Diego. It talks about verbal cues about how the perpetrators showed up at my school and along my routes and would repeat, and would repeat verbal cues. They were actually turned out to be direct conversation methods and showing up at my school. Okay. Now that's just, that's just, I'm just showing you to let you know that the verbal cues were even being mentioned by me. And the fact that they were showing up at my school. I've been gang stalked on a fever scale out here at universities like you would not believe. Uh, now this one right here is directly mentioning library staff at Point Loma Library. Okay, it says right here I was contacting the same prosecutor in Michigan and it literally states it right here that, um... Uh, last week I was compiling information uh, on one of these computers at the library where I am sending you my emails from. All of a sudden the green light appeared on the A drive, okay, because I was making, a, I was keeping, I was writing on a timeline of the torture in, in Michigan and saving it to one of those old 1.4 MF floppy disks that you put in the A drives, okay? And, and it says, I am compiling information that was the log of the torture that happened in Michigan on one of these computers at the library where I'm sending you my emails from. All of a sudden, the green light appeared on the A drive, and the next thing I know, the disk file was no longer accessible. Okay? This was before I started blogging. Okay? Because I didn't know how to use the internet back then. I was just becoming familiar with the internet. These computers I am using are on a network i.e. the day before when I was sending an email two white males after I sat down were loudly discussing how all of a sudden data can just disappear. Later one of them approached a library staff member and as I was walking by I distinctly heard him say don't worry we'll get her. This is a situation that needs the immediate attention of your office and I am not the one to approach I am the victim, Leslie Williams. Now, this was in direct reference to organi what organized gang stalking expeditions will do will anchor fear through direct conversation methods of organized gang stalking. And they will also anchor, what they'll also do is anchor what something that you might experience, okay, a day before or on the same day or even minutes before you experience something. And this is done to form the association in the target's mind 
from a distance that the crime they're about to uh, experience, a crime they just experienced the day before or the morning before or whatever, is being directly managed by a third party they don't know. That's why they get around a target and will anchor things in a target's mind by talking about the things that are about to happen to them. That's why this individual said, I was, he literally said it here, that where I'm sending my emails, all of a sudden the green light appeared on my A drive, and the next thing I know, the disk file was no longer accessible. Okay? And then it said, these computers I am working on a, on a, on a network. The day before when I was sending an email, two white males in the same library after I sat down were loudly, loudly discussing, because they want to make sure you hear it, how all of a sudden data can just disappear. I heard that the day before at the same library in the same computer lab at Point Loma, and then the next day they went and erased all the work I'd done on that day, okay, right after I put the floppy disk in the computer. Because their whole goal was to let me to do the work and then erase it the next day. And they formed the association in my mind that it was going to happen the day before. Loud, loud. That's why they were loudly discussing it. How all of a sudden data can just disappear. Later, one of them approached a library staff member, okay, and as, and then I was walking by, I distinctly heard him say, don't worry, we'll get her. And then within three and a half, four days, the San Diego police approached me at my campsite and pulled a huge organized gang stalking street theater. And I wasn't even doing nothing in the library except for using the computers and minding my own business. Where I was being subjected to organized gang stalking verbal cues that I was already mentioning in email files. And those are direct conversation tactics. Okay? I called them verbal cues back then because I didn't know about gang stalking. And as a result, I wasn't able to research what gang stalking was. And then eventually find out that one of the methods they use is direct conversation tactics. Which is what that was. Okay, how he was saying loudly, discussing how all of a sudden data can just disappear later, and, you know, and then, and that was concerning what he said the day before at the same library in the same computer room, and then the next day all my data disappeared off my hard drive. Okay, that was done loudly discussing direct conversation tactics of organized gang stalking, how they associate themselves, they'll use uh, conversations, okay, in order to anchor fear in a target mind that they're going to be assaulted or that something's going to happen. I mean, the same individuals, as I was walking by them and they were talking to library staff, were basically distinctly, it says, I distinctly heard him say, don't worry, we'll get her. The same individuals, okay, that said what they said the day before, okay. And then, uh, and uh, he said that on that day, that he talked about how data just all of a sudden disappears off of people's uh, uh, computer work, okay? And then th within three days, the San Diego police approached me at my campsite and pulled a huge organized gang stalking uh, street theater towards me, which caused me to go back to Michigan where I was tortured nonstop every single day for over five years. My name is Leslie Williams. I have undisputable proof that I am a victim of this crime. But let me tell you something right now. One of the things... One of the reasons why I proved what I proved in this particular thing concerning this news broadcast and how it's related to John Hall, John Hall advocates supposedly for gang stalking targets and in practically every single one of his uh, YouTube uh, videos that you can watch that he does, interviews, is about gang stalking and remote neural monitoring and how remote neural monitoring is used against gang stalking targets. Now. John Hall is mentioned throughout this entire broadcast because he was either the <coughs> fiancé or girlfriend of one of the victims. And one of the victims describes a crime, a tactic of one of the crimes that happened to her as a re result of being a gang stalking target that I had already exposed in a blog four years before. Just like how I proved to you the second victim of the crime which was, uh, which was here in the later part of the transcript, which is, uh, let's see, where's it at? Do, 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 do. Well, I copied and pasted it from the actual transcript, which is right here, but I've had a hard time finding it right at this second, so I'll just take you to the copied and pasted section of the second individual, and her name is Linda Johnson. All you got to do is go to the broadcast, and you'll see that Linda Johnson's part of the interview. Now, in that part of the interview, it flat out states 
how all of a sudden, then, there's the story of the bracelet that went missing and then reappeared. This was, broad, was broadcasted on February 17, 2010. 2010. Okay? This is an email that was sent from the same library, Point Loma Library, on October 6. I mean, October 24, 2006. That clearly shows you seeing me state physical matter does not disappear out of your apartment and backpack in your apartment and then reappear. Okay? This is Linda Johnson's statement. Then... There's the story of the bracelet that went missing, disappeared, and then reappeared out of her apartment. 2010, she makes that statement in a news broadcast concerning her being a gang stalking uh, target. I was already making that statements in emails that were sent from Point Loma. Physical matter does not disappear out of your apartment and then reappear. Okay, at a location in your apartment. Linda Johnson stating four years later, then there's the story of the bracelet that went missing and then reappeared. That was published on 2010. This is an email from 2006. Physical matter doesn't disappear out of your apartment and backpack and then reappear. 2006, disappear, reappear. 2010, the story of the bracelet that went missing disappeared and then reappeared. You see what I'm saying? I was discussing what was happening to what had happened to me in Michigan. Okay, disappear out of your apartment and then reappear. Okay, concerning contacting a prosecutor in Wayne, Michigan, about what happened to me in Michigan from a library computer in Point Loma Library. It literally flat out states it right right below that statement about the physical matter disappearing and reappearing. Check around the Point Loma Library, San Diego. You never know what you might hear. Direct conversation tactics that I was talking about. In this, in this email concerning them hacking into my computer and erasing information and loudly talking about it and loudly discussing it. So that conversation methods of organized gang stalking. Now, look in the description of this YouTube video for YouTube titles that will show you that I have already undisputably, you think this is proof. This is nothing compared to the proof I got that I have ascertained okay, through clever strategies as a direct result of being gangs. What I did was I developed strategies as a result of being experiencing this crime for over a decade now, every single day, I developed strategies and caught them. I arrived back here in San Diego, California for the first time. I left. These emails were sent. This last one was sent on October 31st, 2006. Within five days, San Diego police came to my campsite, pulled a huge gang stalking street theater towards me. I left that day back to Michigan. And didn't come back to San Diego until August 8, 2011. And since August 8, 2011, up to this date, March 13, 2013, I have undisputable, factual, literal proof. I'm talking about direct proof. Direct proof on videos and audios that this crime is happening to me, again, here in San Diego. How was I gang stalked from Michigan to San Diego in 2006? How was I gang stalked from Connecticut? I was in Connecticut. I went back to Michigan from the 2006 incident, okay? And then stayed there up until April 2011. Then I went to Connecticut for two months and then came back to San Diego in August of 2011. So who gang stalked me here from Michigan to Connecticut to San Diego again? The same exact syndicate that was in, was doing this to me all these years prior. And I have now proved it. Which openly, openly exposes the San Diego public libraries that have been used, the library staff members that have been used, their security that's been used, in every single San Diego University that's been used since I've been back here since August 8, 2011, and current San Diego public libraries. Look in the description of this YouTube video for direct proof that you can witness, and then you will come to understand the little fact that I have been tortured for years, and no one helped me, and I'm just trying to prove it to the public that this crime is happening to me. Thank you.